Yes, I do. Yeah, this is just a testing. Okay. Or do I leave that on? No, I think we need the main page, right? That's what they with Ara. Maybe you put in slide mode and then the first page because is it the Ara? Over to you. It's already five here. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this enriching session on networking, how to leverage your network. It is organized by Cameroonians in International Development, a network of young Cameroonians who are making a difference across the globe, making a difference by reaching out to communities, especially those in need. I am Arang Mifru. I am a communication expert for UNFPA Cameroon, and I will be moderating this session. I wouldn't be alone. I will be accompanied by a seasoned team. And of course, you definitely want to listen to what they have to say. Before we get into the crux of um, our subject matter today, I would just like to say that we're using the word leverage here today to mean how to make maximum use. So for those um, who don't, who are not very familiar with the word leverage, how to leverage your network, in other words, how to make maximum use of your network. I would like you to take special note of the word maximum because that is the goal of today's session. And also we'll have a, a, a set of rules to guide us for this session to be very productive. We will in, uh, invite all participants to please leave comments or questions only in the chat box and um, we will uh, address them accordingly. Without much ado, I'm going to uh, give the room or the opportunity for the panelists to introduce themselves. And I will start with the first panelist of the day, Ms. Zita Fogwe. Kizita, over to you. Thank you very much, ladies first, always. Um, <laughs> my name is Kizita and um, yeah, I'm a Cameroonian working in international development with um, about 15 years of experience across um, different international organizations and the United Nations, notably uh, UNICEF, um, UNDP, uh, UNMAS, and the UN Center for Human Rights and Democracy. Currently, I work for the International Criminal Court as program manager in charge of uh, assistance and reparations mandates for the DRC. Thank you. Thank you, Kizita. You heard it all. I'm sure you'll be itching to find out what Kizita has to share with you regarding networking because she has a full load of experience of, of her own. Secondly, uh, uh, we will give uh, the room to Christian Elonge, who is our second panelist for the day. Christian. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Christian, actually from Accra, and I'm a social entrepreneur and a freelance consultant. I help organizations to manage well their knowledge, to set up mentoring programs within their institution, and also um, promoting children literature through an organization, Mona Kalati. So it's a pleasure being here. Uh, there is a lot to share about networking and I am eager to engage with participants. Thank you. Thank you, Christian, all the way from, uh, from Accra. I told you this uh, group is made up of people from across the globe. So if you're watching us in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, whatever time zone you are in, please feel welcome to join us. We're just beginning, but I bet you the best is yet to come. We will uh, listen to our third panelist, Felix Tabenda. Good evening. Hello, Felix. Hi, Ara. Good evening and uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone <laughs> on the call. Yeah. I am Felix Israel Tabenda uh, Pomban, a Cameroonian as well, residing in Benin, uh, UK. I am a finance controller with uh, Baker Hughes. Uh, it's an oil field service company. 
And um, also with over 10 years experience across finance, across marketing, across communication. So I'm very glad to be here and of course to share my experience and learn as well from all the other panelists. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Felix. And the greetings to all of those who are joining us from the UK as you prepare to get out of quarantine. You know, we wish you all the best. This thank session, you. like I rightly said, is um, going to be able, going to make you to be able to make maximum use of your network. And before we set the ball rolling, I'll share, I'd like to share this small anecdote, this brief anecdote with you all. Once um, in a little village, there was a notable called Bobe. Bobe wanted to leave the group meeting, the village group meeting. He, he had several reasons. He didn't feel it was necessary anymore. He didn't have time. He was so busy. He didn't like the way people talk. He wasn't comfortable with the numerous contributions. You know, you know all these reasons we often have to isolate ourselves from one gathering or the other. He had all those reasons. So he decided to stay away. So about a month after this, he made this decision. The leader of the village uh, meeting group, Mola, decided to pay a visit to Bobe. So he arrived at uh, Bobe's residence in the evening while Bobe was seated around his three stone fireside roasting corn. So when Mola walked in, Bobe welcomed him with a calabash of palm wine. As both men sat for some time, not talking, each person sipping his white stuff, Mola suddenly reached out for the fire and out of the three locks of wood that were in the fireside, he pulled out two. And suddenly there was a change. The once vibrant flames started dwindling. The log, the lone log that was in the fire could not give the room the same brightness that the room had. And so darkness began to envelop the space. And after some time, Mola returned the two locks into the fire and suddenly brightness returned. The flames started blazing. They again became vibrant. And without saying a word, he woke up to leave. And as Bobe walked him out of the door, Bobe reached out, shook his hand and said, thank you Mola. I have seen reason. I will come back to the meeting. This anecdote simply tells us alone, we are bound to be fragile. But when we are together, we make wonders. These are some of the lessons we want you to pull from this session today. And for those of us who are still on the bridge, like Bobe, we hope that this session will make you see reason. And we are planning to do it, or we are going to do it in a very, very enriching manner. And what better way to start by enlightening you on what networking is all about? Why should you network at all? Is there any advantage in networking? Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to find that out. If you want to know the answers to these questions like myself here, yeah? Please pay attention to Kizita, our first panelist for the day. Kizita, over to you. Um, thank you very much. I'd like to ask any of the panelists if you have my presentation to share my screen. For some reason, my, um, my mouse just stopped working. I can't seem to do anything. Is that possible? I'm sure Divine can handle that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying as well, but okay. So while uh, Divine, yeah, actually, thank you, Divine. Divine is working on it. Great. Yeah, okay. thank you. Kizita. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.
Okay. So hello everybody again. It's really a pleasure for me to, to can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can. Yeah, great. So it's really a pleasure for me to, to participate in this as a panelist. Uh, not only to, to share my experiences, but also to learn from what the others are going to say. So um, the first thing I'm going to be talking about has three sections. So basically it's exploring together what is networking, what you understand by networking in the most basic terms, and then as well as how do you network, how do you develop, how do you build your network, uh, and manage your network, because it's not only developing it, you need to manage it as well. And then finally, what are the advantages of uh, building and belonging to a network? Next slide, please. Okay. So as I'm talking, it will be very interesting if some participants, based on what they understand as networking, could quickly text in the chat what uh, to them networking is. You can, do, you can have like 30 seconds to do that. But already, if you can look at the image on the screen, it gives us an idea of, of what networking is. It's about connecting dots. But it will be interesting to if um, any of the participants is inspired and wants to share what they think uh, networking is based on their experiences, uh, they can quickly uh, type something into the chat box. All right. Okay. Some of this is relationship building. Mm -hmm. Any other ideas? Connecting dots, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for me, really, uh, networking is really about um, identifying, it's about developing, building and managing relationships and reputation over time. There are two important words here. You have relationship and you have reputation. It's not only about building. Yes, of course, we can all build relationships. We can all um, develop uh, our networks. But if we do not have a reputation, a consistent reputation of, um, of consistency, of keeping our word, of being hardworking, of being um, uh, honest and all of that, it will be impossible for us to, to maintain or to keep a network. So as much as it is important to build those relationships, it's also important for you as an individual to have a reputation as somebody who is respected, as somebody who is professional and, and as somebody who can be counted on. Because sometimes you can actually develop this network with some very interesting people. And because of your, um, your inconsistency, your waywardness, your um, lack of manners, whatever you want to call it, you have some people who would, ever, who would actually have the opportunity to meet some great people who could help them in their professional and business careers and they do not keep on time for, for appointments or they do not show up, they do not even apologize or they are just unprofessional. So it's really, really important for you to know that building a network also involves you having a reputation of you having a good reputation. Um, and then of course, this involves meeting proactively. And that's another key word we need to, we need to listen to because sitting by yourself, you're not going to create a network. You have to be proactive. You have to always be the person, you know, you need to go towards the people you want to build the network with because you are the one who needs the network. So you have to proactively seek, you have to proactively seek to know people who can provide support to you and you can eventually provide support to them as well because networking is a two-way street. It's not only about taking, it's also about giving. And uh, in our context, um, like this, this, this uh, uh, the firm of two, three, seven professionals, this is a kind of a network. It's more like a professional or a business network. And this is kind of, this is defined as um, a group of people who have connected with one other, with one another for career uh, uh, related reasons. 
and uh, we call ourselves in this network, for instance, contacts or connections, and we can share information on a variety of things. It could be um, employment opportunities, that happens all the time. You see a variety of people sharing op um, employment opportunities. It could also be projects, it could be business opportunities, uh, but not limited to this. You may have sometimes uh, uh, people share information about new laws uh, are passed by the government. Um, you see information about scholarships. So it's a lot of things around building each other. That's what a network should be. It should be like a win-win uh, um, um, association. So if you are not winning in a network, then you really don't have to be in that network. All members belonging to a network should be winning. So, uh, and then the next, um, the next thing I want to talk about are the types of networks. So different scholars have, you have some scholars who talk about five different kinds of networks. You have some who talk about three, uh, but I'm going to, 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 to talk about the three main uh, networking types. You have the operational networking, you have the personal networking, and then you have um, the strategic networking. So operational networking is, um, is more around organizations. It's about um, building relationships outside your company for work to be done. I'm going to give an example. If you're like, um, if you're uh, the logistics officer working for UNICEF, for instance, and you have a construction project, and then you want to outsource it to, to UNOPS, for instance, and then you as the logistics officer, you need to start some informal discussions, first of all, with uh, maybe uh, the logistics officer of UNOPS. So, and those informal discussions eventually develop into formal discussions. And this is like for you guys to be able to work together uh, as quickly as possible, because we all know the, the bottlenecks in some of these organizations. So by the time you build a network, first of all, informally, before moving to the formal, oh. you can... Can you still hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. We can hear you. Okay. Okay. Great. So, building this network, you can together be able to to cut off some bottlenecks and get the work done quickly. So it's very important. That's what an operational network network is. Um, personal networking. Um, this concerns us a lot more. So, personal networking is uh, the development of relationships with groups of people with whom we have similar interests. This 237 uh, networking uh, professional group is a classic example of um, personal networking. But it could also go beyond that. It could be your class of, it could be like an alumni. It could be um, people who belong to, uh, to the same professional group or social group. It could be jangis. It could even be what we call at home, either it's club zero or the football guys usually play on Sunday morning. I don't know, it has some name. I think it's zero, some zero. Club zero or something. Two, two zero or something. Two zero, uh, yes. Yeah, something goal. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know guys usually on Sundays, they go to play football, then they go and eat pepper soup and drink. Yeah. And, you know, they have those, those, those clubs. So, mm -hmm. so this is really about people uh, with whom you have very, you have similar interests and then you come together. And this will allow you to meet a diverse group of like-minded professionals. This is good for career moves and to link you up to kinds of networks for your current work and opportunities. And then uh, the third, the third kind of networking is uh, the strategic network, which is um, a very, very important network. And this is about enlisting the support of people who can help you to achieve your strategic professional and business goals. We also have, like in our group, the 237 professionals, you have a lot of people who are acting as mentors and you have a lot of mentees. And beg me, uh, uh, believe me, there are people in this network, if you're strategic enough that you connect with, would help you develop your professional life, even get a new job in places probably you, you thought you could, never, you could never get a job in. So it's very, very, very important to develop your strategic network in, um, in a very professional way. And then this is, it could be contacts even with peers or senior people within your field. 
strategic networks are crucial for, for sharing ideas, uh, best practices, like, um, like I work for, um, like currently I work for the International Criminal Court. I may be developing a, pro a project or a proposal and I know Benashas is also um, a program funding uh, expert. So I could have some ideas and he's one of the people I'll call immediately to say, hey, this is what I'm thinking. These are my ideas, what do you think? And I know he is going to support me because I know he's a peer but he's also an expert in, in his field. And I know he'll do exactly the same thing if he, if he needed some, some, uh, some support from me for, uh, for something. Same goes for, for Hortans, for instance. Uh, she, may want to, she may want to have a meeting with um, the Minister of Public Health, for instance. And uh, she's trying to find a way of doing that. And then she'll reach out to another peer who probably either works in the ministry or has that engagement with the ministry to advise or to pro provide some support with regards to how to do that. That's kind of, it, it's like, that's like a horizontal kind of strategic networking. On another hand, like recently, um, I remember I spoke in the, in the, um, in the, in the chat group that I worked, I worked for Site Savers um, about seven, eight years ago. I worked there for like, so I actually said that and I shared some job opportunities. And a few people came to me, like texted me inbox to say, hey, I know you work for Sightivers. Can you give us any tips we are trying to, to apply? So that is that is another kind of that those are people reaching out to me in the form of trying to create a strategic network. So those are some of the examples I can give with regards to um, strategic networks. And then I said something which is really crucial about learning best practices, learning new approaches, and keeping tabs keeping tabs on uh, new developments and even technology. So strategic networks are really, really important for not only your personal development, but even for your organization, organizational development because of the new input you'll be bringing in based on your interactions at uh, the strategic networking level. How am I doing with time? Great, so far. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. You're rounding uh, up? Uh, yes, soon. For some reason, I can't see the screen anymore. Yeah, the screen is gone. Hmm. Let me try to share again. Oh, God, this is. Um, just one second. I'm trying to share my screen again. I hope it works this time. Great, ask is it a... Okay. Okay, yes. you found it? Yes, I think so. Fantastic. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, oh uh, yeah, we can. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Ah, technology. <laughs> That's okay. part of networking. So, so we're going now to the next part of my, um, of my presentation, which is the part about developing and uh, managing the network. So it's, uh, this actually has two parts. So the first thing is know what you want. Networking is a fancy word. People just say, oh, I want to create, I want to start networking, I want to meet people, but you need to know exactly what you want, what you want to do. You need to set a goal. You need to set a goal. If you say you're going for a networking event, what do you want to achieve at the end of that event? How many people do you want to meet? Secondly, you need to set, set up an annual trimester or six monthly calendar. A lot of people say, how do you do this? Believe me, if, if only on social media, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on um, what's the other one? On Instagram, on Twitter, you see so many opportunities of uh, workshops like this. Uh, it could be well with COVID now. You don't have a lot of um, physical come-togethers, uh, but you have uh, 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 opportunities like this for virtual meetings, which are usually open to to, to different people. So if it is in your area of interest, you need to be able to check those, those sites very frequently, not only to see what people are up to, but also to see what learning opportunities or networking events are being organized and advertised and put them in your agenda so that you can actually um, participate in some of these um, networking events or workshops or whatever they are. So you have a lot of resources on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and even in our group. I mean, sometimes I see people saying, 
uh, 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 invites to, to participate in different events. So if you want to create a network and something is sent like that in your area of interest, you never know who you're going to meet or, or, or what you're going to learn. So try to always have a plan of the events you'd like to, to participate in. And of course, be friendly and approachable. This is more in the context of you know a physical meeting. In Africa, I think it still happens quite a bit. It's in Europe where the restrictions are really uh, are really tough. But you have to be friendly and approachable. Um, I remember in my days, my like the, my early the early part of my career, I was so unapproachable. When I go to events, I just want to be by myself. I was aloof. I was even um, sometimes aggressive because I didn't know the importance of networking. I just thought anybody wanting to talk to me was, um, you know, had other interests, which was not necessarily true. So you really have to be friendly and approachable and avoid sitting with people you know, because most of the time when you sit with people who you know, it's clearly some of us women, me, myself included, we start talking about how the other women are dressed, who which speaker spoke well or did not speak well, what happened, so it's, you get distracted. So it's better you have a clear objective, like I said in the beginning, to try to meet new people based on the objectives you want to uh, achieve. Be prepared, it is very important. Write down everything, no matter how much of an expert you are, no matter how much you know, it's always better to practice your elevator speech. Practice it at home, practice it on your way to the event, because sometimes you meet some people like uh, a very, uh, um, an example, something that happened to me yesterday, um, I'm currently on mission in Bukavu and I had to meet, I don't know, some of you may know him, Dr. Mugwele of the Pansy Hospital. He recently won the, um, the Nobel Peace Prize. So I had all these things that I told myself, I'm going to tell Dr. Mugwele when I see him. I was prepared, but I did not, I just told myself, this is, I've been doing this work all the time. I've met all kinds of people. But when I finally met the guy, based on the amazing work he's doing, I was tongue tied. I was just looking at him because I expected him to be a lot taller, like I was seeing the pictures, a lot bigger. But I saw him, he's, been, he's grown older, he's a little bit frail, and I was just tongue tied. So I told myself, no matter how many years of experience I have, when you're going to meet people, especially people you have a lot of admiration for, you need to be prepared. Uh, set yourself a target. I already mentioned that. And then when you actually get the opportunity to talk to the people, you talk and you listen. It's very important to listen. It's not only about saying all the things you want to say, you need to listen to what these people also have to say. Another important point is do not set high expectations. Some people just think the first network uh, event they attend, they're gonna meet someone who's gonna give them a job, or who's gonna orientate them towards a school or something. Not necessarily. You may have to attend like 10 network, uh, networking events before you, before you actually meet somebody very interesting. So manage your expectations. Remember to manage your time. If you go to a networking event and you want to meet five people, don't spend one hour with one person, no matter how interesting that person is. Once you have the person's business card and you've done your elevator speech, try to move um, to the next person. Give referrals. What does this mean? This means that if you're talking to somebody and um, the person is like, oh, this is interesting, but do you know anybody working in so and so domain? do not hesitate because even if that person is not interested in you it's important for you to give referrals um with regards to people that person would like to to work with another important thing is to follow up once you've had those business cards follow up send emails follow up with calls if those people have given you their cards it means they they, they, they they've given you permission to send them an email they've given you permission to call them very politely uh, you may have to call 10 times for the pickup but you have to be persistent and then of course, build your professional network online, uh, attend professional networking events, no matter what you say you're gonna attend, you attend. And then ask to do favors for your contacts in the right context. Let me explain. Sometimes you meet some very important contacts and in the course of discussions, you see they're trying to find out some information about something you can say, hey, I can find out this information. If you don't mind, I can send you an, an email with regards to what I found. Immediately, the person knows, hey, this is somebody serious. So this, this depends on your, 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 how your discussion goes. Or it could be in an international conference and it's, you're probably from there. And talking with the person, the person is like, do you know any, any nice restaurants in town? And you say, hey, I can email you a list of some of the best restaurants in town for you to visit. You know, those kinds of things, but it really depends on the context. And you have to be very careful 
when um, you want to offer some of these services. Um, so now, what are the advantages of uh, belonging uh, to a professional network? Of course, it strengthens your professional connections. Uh, you get career advice and support. This is actually what is happening in our group, in our 237 uh, professional group. Uh, you can find a job you love. Uh, you can develop long lasting personal relationships. That is so true for me. And then you gain a different perspective. You see, sometimes we have so many intellectual discussions in the group that it's very interesting. You know, we disagree, we agree to disagree. I don't always agree with what uh, people say in the group, but I actually respect their opinion because it gives me a different perspective. And then when you belong to a network, you also gain confidence because you learn a lot of things, you see different perspectives and you can participate better in, um, in an intellectual discussion. Of course, it raises your profile. Uh, and then you get fresh ideas. So after participating in a networking event, what next? Um, so you have your, your strategic planning. It's like what I said, this is like a, a nutshell of everything I've been saying. You plan your event where you want to go. You implement the, 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 the plan. That's like you attend those events. You follow up. You do an evaluation. What did I succeed? in all of these events I've been um, attending, in what went well, what did not go well, what are the lessons learned, what can I do better? And then you plan again. So it's like a circle, it's like the project management circle. So you plan, you implement, you follow up, you evaluate, what are the lessons learned, you plan again and you implement. So, but above all, when you're attending these events, try to have fun. It's not, it's not I mean, we take life too seriously. When you go to these events, as much as you're learning, remember to have fun while you learn. Thank you very much. Great. A round of applause for Kizita, please. Wonderful presentation. Wonderful, fantastic. To sum it up all, I think we can gather from Kizita's presentation that networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. Okay? You need to do your own part of the work. You need to contribute as well. You shouldn't just be on the expecting end, but you have some work to do yourself. Someone smart once said that the opposite of networking is not working. You get that? If you don't work, there's no network for you. So you have to make an effort. All right, the chat box is already buzzing and Shout out to everyone who is sending messages. It, this is supposed to be a participative session. And that's why we're going a little bit fast because we want to give more time for the interaction, okay? The question and answer session. There will be a question and answer session at the end of the third, um, the third uh, presentation. That's when we must have listened to the third uh, panelist. So without much ado, we will go to the second panelist. But I just want to send a shout out to a few people who have been sending messages in the in, in the chat box, notably to you, uh, Elvis Ntemfak, who says that uh, to summarize the anecdote we heard at the beginning of the session, it, it, it's just it is it, 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 we can summarize it as team T E A. M, which means together everyone achieves more. And uh, also, we are going to have a musical interlude at the end of the third panelist. That means a third presentation. After Felix Tabenda's presentation, we will have a, a musical interlude. And we are inviting our friend Andrew, Andrew Banqui. Please prepare us a good Cameroonian sound because here we are talking about 237 to spice up things before we get into the question answer session. Kizita also uh, uh, widely uh, emphasized on the 237 professionals group. This group is on WhatsApp, this group is on Facebook, this group is on YouTube. We will be sharing you links to this group to our various social media platforms so that you can get to find out more about what we do, the kind of networking we do in this group. Okay, talking about networking, what are those, some of those bizarre things you have heard about networking? What are, like, like Bobby in the, in the anecdote, who, who is always complaining what are some of those evil bad things we've heard about networking? And for those of us who are networking, do you need some tips on how to better network? 
All right. If that's your case, then please pay attention to our second panelist, Christian Elonge, who will tell us more about the crooks of networking. Christian, good evening once again. Okay. Good evening, Fro. Uh, I hope you are all able to hear me and that Fantastic. you also have access to my screen presentation. Is yes. that okay? We've Fantastic. seen it already. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am Christian Elonge, and it's a pleasure having all of you here. And I'm going to share my experiences in terms of networking and how networking has helped me to be where I am today, to be who I am today, and to do what I am able of doing today. So at the end of this you know, engagement, if there are things that I would really appreciate all of us to remember, is first, networking is a lifestyle. Second, we, it is all about being people-oriented. Third, we earn and learn more by sharing and giving. And finally, be patient. There is, it's not a rush, be patient. So if we, you forget anything, I would really appreciate if this four key element could be remembered at the end. So I think we have already shared how networking is basically a lifestyle. We are networking either we want it or not. Either you desire it or not, you are networking. Your attitude is networking. The way you communicate with other people is an invitation or a signal to whether you are willing to connect with them or not. So wherever we are, whatever space, we are in, we are networking consciously or unconsciously. There are some myths that many people think about networking. They think that, you know, networking is all about being manipulative. They think that networking is about having a huge number of network. No, you can just know two people, but the two people that you know, when they are strategic, as Mrs. Kizita said, they can open the gates you know, of president for you. So it's not about the quantity of the people that you have access to. It's about how connected, how deep your engagement with them is. So for me, I would really advise that rather than having, knowing thousand people, you know, and engaging just with five, just have five people and engage meaningfully and significantly, at least with those four people. Because if I am in your network, you never chat on me, you never send me, any high, you never check on me, nothing, you know, then I'm not really going to bring you uh, an added value. You are not really going to be in my mind whenever I have access to an opportunity. So it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. And networking is not reserved for people who are extrovert. Even if you are shy, even if you are introvert, there are ways for you to network. And we are going to look at some of those ways as we are moving forward. Now, there are some common errors that I've observed in networking, errors that I've made myself and I've learned through it, and errors that I've observed many others doing. So the first thing, as I've said, is that people think that networking is at event. It's not when you go to a business event that you are going to network. It's not going when you attend to such meeting. Like, do those meetings are just areas, space where the probability of networking is higher? but you can network at any time. Someone you meet on the street that you may never expect anything from the person. The way you treat that person, the way you engage with that person can leave a legacy or what I call a bank of goodwill. And networking is all about developing that bank of goodwill in people. Like it's about making people be willing to help you when you are in need. It may not be now, it may be in 10 years, but when you create that bank, it will be useful. So networking is not at event or at moment, it's a lifestyle. Please, when you are networking, don't, mostly on social media, you know, don't just send message to people anyhow, please. The first impression is, is usually the last, you know, the way you engage the first time will determine how the person will treat you the next time. Mind your topic. Some people are too religious and they will start talking and say, oh, God bless your God. And sir, please, please. <laughs> Be, be, be mindful of the words that you are using. You know, each one has its own sensitivity and you need to know how to engage with them. Be straightforward. Some people, before they will say, I want this, they will write like an essay. And I have seen, nye, 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 nye. I say, the person, please, serious people are busy, are busy and they are mindful of their time. So be straightforward as much as possible. Be sensitive to salutation. And some people, they will see your name is, 
uh, uh, <laughs> Stephanie, they will write to you. They will not put Mrs. They will just say uh, Miss Steph, you know, as if he's, he, he's, he, he's your classmate that you have been on school with him. So let's be mindful. And one way you can check out how the person is, you know, using his name on social media or on his website, you can know where, how the person would like to be addressed. So the overall picture is here that we should not over, over familiarize. The other thing is about personalization. And this is very key on LinkedIn. We are going to talk about LinkedIn. You know, when you go on LinkedIn, there are some type of cool message that is boring. It can even make you go off. You know, some people will say, there is this automatic messages that LinkedIn usually put. Hi, I would like to connect with you. Tell you, if you send me that message, I will difficultly reply, or I will think twice before responding. Because people like to connect with people. So they want to be sure that the person engaging with them comes for a purpose. The person is straight, like objective or right, oriented what do you want why are you connecting with me and not someone else you need to show what value the person is having which push you to desire you know to be in contact with that person so personalization how do you do it so when you say send you personalize you say hi i've noticed that you are working in the field of international development on resource mobilization i've also in in, in this area or maybe i've written a paper on this could you kindly have a look at it I, I don't understand you. So you need to find a way when you read the profile of the person, when the person is doing something, what common ground do you both have together? And you build on that common ground to connect. When you are sending emails, same thing, be short and, and simple. Don't go do as if you are a beggar. Some people, they are writing emails as if they are begging. You know, even if you are begging, don't show that you are begging. Know yourself, know your value. So... And, find, and finally, be pro on social media. Ah, Charlie, this one. Some people don't know exactly how to use social media. The way you use Facebook is not the same that you use uh, LinkedIn. It's not the same that you use Twitter. Some people, they will take, I don't know, you know, some funny picture, go and post it on LinkedIn. And tomorrow you are surprised that you are never getting job offered. Why? Because the person is seeing your profile, the picture you are showing there is not portraying someone who is serious. And let's never forget that the first impression is usually the last. The first impression is usually the last in networking. So after looking at those things that should be avoided, here are 15 key things that if you leverage on it, you will be excellent at networking. And remember, not excellent during events, but making it to be a part of you, to making it to be a part of your lifestyle. One of the key elements is to know, I think uh, 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 Mrs. Kizita has already shared about that, you know, like basically to honor your promises. If you say, I'm going to help you get this list or I'm going to do this for you, be sure that you do it effectively. Don't promise and you don't deliver, it's dangerous. Try as much as possible to value face-to-face -face interaction. It's true that during COVID, we have no other choice because of social distancing to use uh, uh, Twitter, to use this, or online tools, but whenever it's possible to meet someone face to face, never hesitate. Why? Because of our memory, we call it the visual memory. People remember easily things that they have seen than things that they have heard. Are you understanding? It's easier for me to think about someone that I have seen face to face, to think about someone whose smile has left an impression on me, to think about someone whose kindness, whose, like there's always something that when there's that face to face interaction, is best, you know. And also, when you go into networking, remember what I said in the beginning, be people oriented. It's not about what you want. It's about what you are willing to offer. Because me, for example, I remember back in the days when I was going to networking events or meeting with people, I was always saying, ah, Charlie, this person, he can help me get a job. Oh, this person can help me get a contract. Charlie, this person can help me get this, can help me get this. It's all about us, us, us. It's dangerous if you go with an I, I, I mental mentality in networking. When you are egocentric, you will never have the best out of people because what we usually forget is that the best opportunity knock at our doors when we expect it the less. So what does it mean? It means that you shouldn't expect to harvest what you are sowing the day you are doing it or the moment you are doing it. That's why being people oriented, be someone who is kind, be someone who is prioritizing others first is key. 
So when you engage with someone during a networking event, what I will always try to find is, Charlie, what can I help this person to do? I will try to listen than to talk because many people, they like talking. Eh, I have 20 years experience. I've done this. I've, it's good. But what you have done, how does it help the person who you are talking to? Are you understanding? So let's learn to be humble when we are participating to networking events or engaging with people. So you listen. This person is saying, so I will always, please, if you forget, keep this. Always try to find something that you can help the person with. If you get it, if you can bring an added value to what the person is doing, the person will make sure that you will return the ascensor to you. It's like, if you help me, I will naturally be willing to help you to it in return. But if you have not helped me, you have just come and share what you can do without looking at what you can help me achieve, then we are not connecting. But connection is through service. Connection is through bringing added value. So it's key. Now, let's look at some key uh, techniques that you can use when you are networking on, 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 on social uh, media. So if we take the example of LinkedIn, please, after this meeting, if that's not your case, go on your LinkedIn profile. Look at the three people which profile is very interesting for you. What do you admire on their profile? How have they structured it? And you look at your own profile. Are you also doing the same? For example, you will notice that they have something like a bio. You know, they have something like a bio. They have something like they are publishing regularly. They are using storytelling to tell about what they are doing. You cannot be passionate about something and you don't talk about it. So people will be willing to connect with you by looking at the passion, you know, how willing you are to help others, to share with others. So structure your LinkedIn profile, add your experiences, focus on the achievement more than the responsibilities. On Twitter, go and connect with your people that you want to connect with on, 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 on Twitter. Make sure that your referral are also present, you know, and always be people oriented, service oriented. What can I do for you? How can I help you? If you have that mentality, you will succeed always in mentoring. I can assure you. If you always look at what you can give than what you can receive, you will always excel. Mm. You also have your alma mater. Some of us, when we graduate, ah, actually, it looks like your classmates, they have no value. No, you have to connect regularly with them. Some of them, they will greet you on social media because you are somewhere, you think that you are in the sky, you will, know, you, you will not think about them. No, because as I've said, the best opportunities happen when you expect it the less, you know, when you expect it the less. So focus on how to help. And let me tell you, when you have that mentality of helping other people or always looking how to bring an added value, networking will be part, it will, it, will, it will be like a lifestyle. Like me, for example, every morning when I wake up, there are three things I ask myself. I'm grateful for what God has been doing by giving me the grace of being alive. And I'll ask God, God, help me to see someone to whom I can bring an added value. Show me someone that I can help. Whenever I help someone in a day, my day is, my day is complete. I am happy. But what we forget is that I am doing it out of goodwill. But tomorrow, when you will be in need, the person you expected the less is the person that will come and give you a hand. And that's networking. So you can network with your neighborhood. You can network with your alma mater. You can network in the market. You can network at church. You can network everywhere. It is a lifestyle. And finally, how to network with, your, with, with a coach or, a, or a, a mentor. Some of us, we have mentors who are pouring wisdom, who are sharing their experiences with us. We don't even value it enough. Let's learn to say thank you. If you're a good networker, Saying thank you will be something that will be part of your lifestyle. You will learn how to appreciate what others are doing for you. You will learn how to also give out to other people because you know that whatever you have, you have received it from other people. There is no one in this earth, there is no one who has achieved his goal or his dream by himself. Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, none of them have been where they are without the support of others. It's like a ladder. There is someone who will stand on which you will step to get it at a higher level. So learn to value those relationships. If you have a mentor, are you regularly saying to the mentor that, hey, mentor, thank you. When I was at this period of my life, you have given me advice. You have wish have helped me to do this. When I was at school, you have helped me doing this. When you are great, when, when you express gratitude, people will be more willing to do more for you. 
So, and that's how you nurture, that's how you cultivate the networking relationship that you, you currently have. So how to kickstart a conversation when you are at a networking event? You know, you, you need to be curious, as I said, and that's where the listening, listen more than talking, listen more, talk less. It's not for nothing that we just have one tongue and two ears. Listen, listen, open it, listen more. The second thing, you need to, you need to be open. You know, you, you need to be open. Some people you may see at a networking event, and this is very funny. They may look at if they have, they have nothing they can bring on to you, but, you know, tomorrow, they may have access to a door that has been closed to you, and they will now take you with their hand and bring you into that, into that door. The last thing is to know your industry, know what is happening in your field. Some people, they like to talk about issues that are relevant, know what's going on. It's very, very important. And remember, in the beginning, I talk about people who are shy. See, if you are shy, please, just learn to ask good questions. Just ask good, as, as I said, talk less, listen more. If you are shy and you ask questions, you smile. People want to be friends with people who are smiling. If you smile, you will naturally be a good networker. But if you are always frowning, some people think that because they are frowning their face, they look serious. They are, they are always like this. You will see them at meetings, they will cross their leg. They are like this, <laughs> serious. I, I say, ah, see, if you frown your face, people will not come to you. No matter your experience, no matter your value, they will not be interested. And who is losing? You are the one. So smile. Smiling is an indirect invitation. So if you are introvert, those are the things that you can, you know, focus on. Now, how to network with thought leaders? As I've said, follow them on social media and engage with their content, what they are publishing. If they are tweeting, go and like it and comment. If it's on, 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 on LinkedIn, if they are doing something, go and engage. You say, hey, Charlie, but be sincere. Don't go and lie. Don't, if they say some rubbish thing, don't go and say, oh, this thing. No, be honest, you know, because if you lie, it will catch you back tomorrow. Engage in relevant communities. They are, they are, they are a group of professionals on LinkedIn. That on Facebook that you can join, engage with people there, and leverage on your email signature. You know, when you sign, put elements there that will help people to know that mm, this is what I'm doing. And remember, special occasion, birthday. Me, I don't joke with birthday. See, if you know someone that you want that this person will help you, ah, oh, Charlie, I ha have their birthday in your calendar. When that day happens, don't just send the message, <laughs> call them. Say, Oga, oh, happy <laughs> birthday. Don't, tell them something. When people know that you value them, they will value you. <laughs> yes. So engage at strategic moment, you know, and how to connect out uh, offline. The key here, don't focus too much on giving your business card. I've met some people when they get, like, they get to uh, networking events, they have like 30 business cards. They will just, they will not even greet you, but you have already have the, the business card. You don't know their name, you have the business card. How will you engage now? It's impossible. You get it. Connect connect if you share your business card with the engaging the person will never me i was doing that i just forgot i have at least 89 you know a, a business card here i see this card i see the, the title is important but i didn't engage with the person so i don't even know where i will start when i will connect but if you focus on connecting on engaging you may know five people at least you know that when you will call or when you will send an email you will say that yes we talk about uh, these things do you get it because you have something in common but I'm not saying that having business card is not okay. Have a business card, but just share it intelligently. And you do it intelligently when you are listening. So you know that, uh -huh, this person, we are on the common ground, so I can give him my business card. We have talked some more. So if he's trying to remember me, the business card will be like a support. But don't give a card without even connecting. It's like witchcraft. It will never work. And don't lie, please. The person will catch you back tomorrow, I beg. So finally, you know, let's remember this. It comes from Ecclesiastes 420. A cord of three strands is not quick torn apart. When you network, when you connect with other people, you are like a giant. What you want to achieve in life, what you want to achieve in your career, in your marriage, in anything, there are people who have went ahead of you. Just connect with them. Just link up with them and they will make you stronger. You will not be easily be broken. And finally, as I've said in the beginning, be patient. It's not a rush. It takes time. It takes learning. Be people-oriented. Try to look at what you can bring, you know, and make networking a lifestyle. And I would like to close with this quote. A little patience is better than a lot of force. 
you know, a little patience is better than a lot of us. So thank you very much. And I look forward for questions so that we can engage more on this. Thank you. Fantastic presentation. A round of applause for this young man. Wow. That was brilliant. Oh my God. Networking is a lifestyle. Somebody say yes, if this presentation touched you as much as, as, as it touched me. Oh my, this was, wow. It was hectic, great. Wow, Christian, thank you so much for all those tips. For those who are on the bridge, I think you have crossed over to the right side now because with Kizita's presentation and with Christian's presentation now, wow, networking, definitely, that is the tea. If you're not networking, you're losing out and you better do it. And the 237 platform is one of those places where you can network. We are on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on Slack, on, to, uh, on YouTube. The links will be shared accordingly. I really, just to summarize what Christian said, I think in, in a nutshell, his presentation simply told us that your network is your net what? Eclair, or we'll add the volume. Should I increase the volume? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> your network is your net what? How you maximize your network determines a lot of things in your life, your professional life, your social life. Even at home, we network. Yes or no, you network with your partner, you network with your kids. Networking is the key. It is a lifestyle. It's not something you only do at events or on social media. It's something you, you do with all the time. And one other key thing Christian said is that networking is about, you help me, I help you, okay? It's a give and it's a take. I think that is something that resonates from things from the start because Kizita made mention of that in her presentation. Christian has still emphasized on it. In Africa, we say, you scratch my back, I scratch your own. That is also networking. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, welcome on board. We have over 60 participants and the chat box is actually buzzing right now. I'm going to send out shout outs to some people who are actually sending tons and tons of messages. Shout out to you, Kimberly Nde. Shout out to you, Shu Divine Mambone. Shout out to you, Chicago Gabi, Venatius Phone, Fongbang Lynette, Etienne Kuzong, Chad Wien, Afon Quenti, Adrian Kum, Jimmy, Nkianti Fru, Achondu Sonita, Joy Chefu. And if I've not caught your name, it doesn't mean you don't matter. Shout out to you all. We've seen your messages. We are going to definitely read all your messages. And that's why we are going fast because we want to give time for a lot of interaction on this session. And we encourage you to continue sending in your messages on the chat box. Please make sure that you, uh, if, 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 a, if a question is, if your question is um, targeting a particular panelist or is directed to a particular panelist, make sure you mention their name when you are asking that question so that during the interactive session, we will uh, uh, direct that question to them. Benatius Fon, shout out to you as well. If you're just joining us, please stay glued because you haven't missed it all. The best is yet to come. And uh, of course, Chefu Joy, she's very active on the chat uh, platform and we encourage you all to do the same. We will continue finding out more about networking. Most of the times when, you, when, when people want to network, they have a target. Yes, Kizita said you should have a target. What's your target? Is it getting a job? Is it finding a mentor or a coach? Is it finding a, landing a business opportunity? Whatever your target is, the next presentation will tell you just exactly how to go about it. And it's no other person but Felix Israel Tabenda. Please stay glued because you have a lot to learn from this session. Felix, good evening once again. Good evening, Nara. Thanks, thanks very much. And of course, permit me applaud my fellow panelists, Kizita and uh, Christian, because they, they have actually made my job easier. 
<laughs> and um, I, I really love like some of the key points they mentioned, like Kizitsa started about your identity and your reputation. Mm -hmm. And those are, those are two things she stressed a lot about. She, she really highlighted them. It's a win-win issue, tips on how to apply for a job. And Christian came on with the attitude aspect of it, which based on our culture, based on our upbringing, sometimes we tend to miss that part of it. And we actually derail from what networking is all about. We get on to the topic of godfathership. So those are some of the things I'm, I'm going to talk about. And they have given me the opportunity, I would say, to share some of the practical examples as well on what networking and how to leverage your network. So once more, thank you all. I'm Felix Israel Tabenda. And I'll be taking you through this last part of how to leverage your network for an interview, uh, to get a coach or a mentor and for a business opportunity. There is this uh, quote I read from uh, one of Dr. Miles Monroe's book, where he said, the challenge we have in Africa in particular is because our self-worth, our self-esteem and our self-concepts have been challenged to feel that we cannot go beyond a certain point. Hence, some of these concepts we've discussed today, which the, the prior panelists have discussed, we see them as very strange things, but these are things we do every day, be it your spiritual network with whatever you believe in, be it your family network where you need to be able to talk with your mom to get access to your dad, be it at your job where people need to know you to be able to recommend you, or your community if you are into politics, how do you get people to vote you in? But we are going to focus on these three aspects. First, on an interview. And I'm going to be using very practical situations here. So the first one, an interview. Majority of the jobs, if you got what our, our prior panelist said, majority of the jobs and top jobs in particular, it will come from a lot of networking events. It will come from a lot of referrals. It will come from me saying, okay, I've had this session with Kizita. I know that she's good in this. I know she's good in that. I've had this session with Aga, who is a very fantastic communicator. I think I can recommend her for this job. That leads me to an example on an interview. In 2008, when I graduated from the University of Boya, my first job interview was at Maligo Junction, where we have the grilled fish and all. And my first uh, recruiter, she, when she met me there, she said, uh, Felix, I think I saw you during the presentation on campus. Um, we have this opportunity coming up. I need you to support in communication. Now I was an MC, but my background is accounting. But she wanted me to do some sort of a communication job. I immediately accepted, took this opportunity, started the job. Then I told her, actually, I'm an accountant, so I can take on finance and administration. Hence, that opportunity led me to take on that role in the same business. It was a very small business. You still have it there today at Malingo Junction. But that is what happened, and I got a job. A second example I can give you, I think we have one of them on the call. Permit me, appreciate my coach, Mungai Fi. And the reason I say this on this call today when I left that first job I met mention of in Malingo Junction, Mungai was in Yaoundi working with um, then Ringo. And this was what he said to the then owner of Ringo. They were looking for a communications or a marketing officer. And Mungai took the risk. I've never said this to him, but I keep thanking, I keep thanking him and singing his praises. He took the risk to tell the recruiter, I have somebody in Boya who will do this job. And if he doesn't deliver within three months, you should lay him off. Guys, that is networking for me, where I can put on my reputation or put off my reputation on the table. And I tell whoever is recruiting that I can vouch for this person. If they don't perform within three months, I am out. That person is out. Mm. That is what Mungai Fi did for me. I left Boya for Yaoundé, attended the interview. Within 10 minutes, I got that job. And I can go on and on and on. There was another job where someone else who came in for this job I was doing saw what the customer service I was able to deliver. And he recommended me for something higher. Without telling me, you get a phone interview. Well, we have this, this, this opportunity. We have been, uh, you've been recommended by this person. And he says, you will be able to deliver. But from your CV, you are an accountant. Why should we accept you? 
I said, you should accept me based on the word of the person who recommended me. Whatever thing he said, if I can't do it, please, you can fire me within the next one month. And that became my mantra because why? I got a coach who instituted or implemented that in me. So hence, when we look at interviews, people want to, they, they focus more on that referral which somebody has given to you and they want to build on it because it is a bank. It is a soft bank you have. And when that bank is broken, you cannot rebuild it. So hence, the tips which the, the prior panelists have mentioned, those are some of the ways which practically I had to use it. If I go to the second one, getting a coach and a mentor, these are two different things, but I'm not going to take us much of our time to break down on it. But how do you get a coach and how do you network to get a mentor? I put there first, defining yourself, your mission. In the university 2008, I attended my first, I would say, networking event with the Junior Chambers International. And when the presenter, they were doing the presentation on uh, the power to reinvent yourself. Mungai was also part of this team. And they asked us to state our vision for the next one or two years. I said, passion for service with exemplary leadership. And I was called on, okay, can you explain? I said, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but I hope that somebody can guide me with it. And Mungai stood up again there. That is how I knew him. And that is how he bought into the idea of being a coach and a mentor to me. And they groomed me up within one year. I told them within one year, I want to lead this organization. That organization, you cannot lead within one year because there are certain things you need to go through for you to be up to the task. But what did I need to do? I needed to network with the people who were delivering this training. I needed to network with the participants whom I saw there that could be a coach or a mentor to me. I needed to network with people out of that forum. Hence, when I presented that vision, I came back to those seniors who were there in that meeting and I shared my idea as Chris puts it, you have to give something to get something. Now, it shouldn't be misinterpreted. It's a quid pro quo, I understand but it shouldn't be misinterpreted like what happens to us back home to get into some of the public institutions. I completely marked that as an X. That is not networking. That is not what the godfathership is all about. When I presented this idea, I had three other JCI members who came back and said, okay, Felix, if you want to do this and set an example within one year, this is how we can help you. Step one, you do this. Step two, you do this. And step three, this is what we expect from you. This is the result we expect. And we started up within one year, we brought in about 10 active members to this group, whom at the end of the day elected me as a leader of that group. Now, who was my coach? That was Mungai Fi. Who were the people I brought in? I was a mentee, if I go with the language of mentor and mentee. And I brought in 10 other people whom I have to transfer that knowledge. Hence, that is a network till date. This is 10 years or 11 to 12 years after, you can pick up the phone and call any of these people, they will be able to vouch for any of them. Mm -hmm. For me, that is what coaching, that is what mentoring, and that is what networking is about. A coach will bring out the best in you, a mentor will guide you around what is in life and how you can use your experience to build on for your next level. And the last part on a business opportunity, I will still use another example, and I, I keep going back to the university because I know we have a lot of people looking for jobs, people looking to create business opportunities. It's a win-win concept. I won't overlevel that point again because it has been spoken about. People want to see what are you going, what are you willing to give for me to be able to support your projects? And this is for those who are in the business sector. 2009, we hosted an event back in the University of Boya again, or for JCI Cameroon, and we didn't have money. For those of you who know this organization, it's based on zero budget, and it's a, it's a concept which we borrowed from the United Nations. You need to look for ways to get funds. You need to look for ways to get partners. And so we developed a business plan, and we told some of the businesses then in Boya that if you are able to, to let me give this example, Unix, I think most of you would know it is a microfinance or FIFA. When I went in into Unix and I said, we have a network of young entrepreneurs and leaders aged between 18 and 40 
We are hosting an event expecting over 200 participants. On this day, this is the result we expect from the event. And this is what we want from you, be it FIFA or Unix or any microfinance. I need you to come and market your products and services to this group of 200 participants. However, for every account which a student opens, I get 2,000 francs. For every account which a referral opens, they get 2,000 francs. Hence, this microfinance was able to sponsor part of that event, got a banner up, while our members are making money from this networking event. That is a business opportunity. That is how you leverage your network. You can't walk into an office and you tell them, fine, um, I need a job, I need this. Let me just drop this in here. For those looking for a job, and I challenge you today, get into, maybe I, I may be a little bit biased looking at the finance sector. Get into any of the microfinance institutions. This is a policy. It's a policy because I've worked in three of them and I know exactly that this policy exists, but the marketing managers or marketing uh, staff they always look for a way to go around this policy. For those who are into marketing, forgive me for spilling out your secret. But every microfinance institution provides a commission on every account which is opened. So if you walk into a microfinance today or you want to create your business and you tell them, fine, I'm able to bring you in maybe 10 um, new account holders in the next one week. This is how much I expect as a commission. There is no marketing manager, and quote me for it, there is no marketing manager who will tell you no because their commissions and their bonuses are based on the number of people or the number of account holders they bring. So that is how you can leverage your network to get the win-win perspective, which Christian and Kizita highlighted. So if I go on to the next one, the do's and don'ts of offline and online marketing. I know um, Christian really hammered on this very well. And when we shared notes, one of the points I wanted to highlight, if you see there on the don'ts, never directly ask individuals in your network for a job. Mm -hmm. I will go back to my experience back home. After the fourth job I had, this was still in marketing. I told my networks, guys, I need to move into what I've studied because I want to know what this other industry is all about. This is what I can do. These are the results I have from my marketing experience. I never did ask for a job that I need to get into this particular company, but I, I shared with them the vision I have and they bought into it. Two of them, permit me, I'm so fond of him, is still on this call, who was part of the HR in the company then. He went up to the HR director, they were looking for an account uh, payable assistant and he said, I have this person, he doesn't have an accounting experience, but he has an accounting background, but this is what he has done in marketing. Guys, your experience, regardless of your training, can sell you to the highest level. Within a week, I got a call, moved down to Douala from Yaoundé, and the normal style back home is that people will believe or will expect that because, say, Aranu uh, referred me to this job, Aranu is in HR, Aranu should be in that interview to interview me. That's one thing which I want us to really cancel out of our minds. When I got there, I was only told later on after I'd accepted this job that two of our senior staff vouched for you and they showed me a letter that they are ready to resign or step down if I don't deliver within a specific period. I'm going back again to Christian's point. What is your attitude? What is your vision? What is your passion? What is your purpose? What do people know you for? Can somebody take that risk to put their lives on the line because of you? That is networking. Whatever thing happens within our territorial borders in Cameroon, where you pick up a phone and call somebody in Yaoundé and you are offered a job, be careful because you will have to pay for that job. In one way or the other, be it financially or with your life, you are going to pay for it. So I go with the, with the, with the system of, I don't need somebody to put in a word based on their word, but to put in a word based on my action and my proven results. Mm. That is what we get from networking. So some of the do's here, which I just highlighted, be genuine, 
ask open-ended questions, ask for referrals, and elevator pitch is something Kizita also hammered on. You have two minutes to talk about yourself when you meet somebody new, for example, or even if you're already in a job, even if you're already in a job, we call it the elevator pitch. You have a CEO with you in the lift going up to their office or to their floor. What exactly is in your mind? What is your vision? What drives you? What wakes you up in the morning? As Christian mentioned, how, what wakes you up in the morning that you can share with this person and they buy into your idea? For me, that is what networking is all about. You buy my vision, you buy my ideas, you buy my passion. And of course, I am also putting in myself to deliver a particular result. And so to the last part of uh, the talk today, overcome the fear of networking. This is a personal story I wanna share because I know it's going to not only bless a lot of people, but also change your perspective about networking. Four key points I mentioned on the left, your vision. Remember when I started, I spoke about my vision, passion for service with exemplary leadership. This is something I said, I didn't even know. I didn't know what it meant, what it meant. But my coaches and mentors over the years have been able to groom me in this line, which today I can stand and tell my family, I can stand and tell my wife that this is what I believe in because this is what brings me joy. This is what wakes me up in the morning. Passion for service with exemplary leadership. How do I meet somebody on the street like the way Mungai saw me and recommended me for a job? How do I meet somebody who is starting their career and I give in a word for them to be better off than me? Your vision matters. People buy into your vision. Continuous learning and improvement. You see the circles I have on the right. Substance, courage, and strategic foresight. How do you build your substance? Your substance is built over time. Your substance is what people know you for. Majority of my people or my friends in my network, they know me as a communicator. They know me as uh, an MC. It is just recently that a few people really realized, oh, Felix, you didn't do JMC in UB, you actually did accounting. I'm like, yes, but that was a passion. That passion helped me to build a network. That network brought me into what I studied in the university. Hence, here I am today still doing the accounting role. So it's a continuous process of learning. It's a continuous process of improvement. When I talk with my coaches today, we are not talking like, somebody is begging for something from the other. No, we share ideas. And I still call him today coach because when I share like a presentation like this, I know in the next 15 minutes after this call, he's going to give me a ring. Felix, this is what went wrong. This is what you would have done better. This is what I expect from you. That is networking. The third point, personal philosophy and definition of success. I won't talk much to this. Chris mentioned it. What gives you joy in the morning? That is success. Mm. If that doesn't wake you up, whatever thing doesn't wake you up in the morning, it's not success. Money is not success. Wealth is not success. Because success is what makes you happy. And the last part of it, share your story. So it brings me to these three boxes. Substance, I already mentioned. Courage and communication. You are in a job. You want to get promoted. You want your CEO to know you. You want your manager to recommend you. You want your colleagues to speak about you. However, projects like this come up in the office and they ask, who can take on this role? Everybody shies away. No, I can't. We are fond of amongst ourselves as Africans and most on the call, Cameroonians here on the call, we tend to really progress individually, but not collectively. Mm. This is an area, courage and communication, which we need to build on. Because people see you, they know you, they know what you are capable of doing because you sell yourself, you sell your vision. And having a strategic foresight, this for me, it's a lot of fun when I talk about strategic foresight. Living in Douala, if you know how to drive in Douala, then this is something that you know to do very well and practically. I use that example because for me, I define strategic foresight as driving down the streets of uh, Bonaberry with all sorts of Okadas on your left and right, some at your back, some in front. What is strategic foresight in networking? 
is that you know where the risks are on the left and on the right, but you are focused on something you need to achieve right in front of you, right ahead of you. However, you don't lose sight of those people behind who yeah. pushed you, who were that ladder, as Chris mentioned, who were the ladder for you to climb up. Today, I recommend Mungai, I recommend Fred, I recommend Marian Masango, who is on this call, so many of them because they were the ladder I used to climb. And today, I can recommend them because I brought them in into an organization, JCI, and some of them superseded my level in this organization. And the last example I can give you, I take the risk for, I know most of the people on the call will be talking about how to get a job. I take the risk to say this, when I get onto a role, I ensure my manager knows these four things about me. I ensure my peers know these four things about me. Mm. I ensure that my N plus two, that is my manager's manager, knows these four things about me. And lastly, I ensure that those two people, my manager and my manager's manager, knows that in the next two to three years, this is where I want to be. By the grace of God, it has worked for me for 10 years and it's still working. And for you to move to that next step, remember, you need to overcome the fear of networking. I walk up to my manager and I think I have a few of my colleagues on this call so I can, I can say it. I walk up to my manager and I tell them, in the next two years, I'm going to train somebody who will take over my role and do it better than I do. Guys, you do that in Cameroon, you might be fired. But that is how you overcome the fear of networking. That is how you overcome the fear for you to grow. So I say that, and I intentionally train that person to take over my role. By the time that person is done, he or she will be the one to sell your praises. He or she becomes your network or your net worth because he will sell you to the leaders. He or she will sell you to the people in the company. Hence, your word is spreading, your network is spreading. Why will a manager not take that chance to step you up to the next level? And so to close, I, I just have this paragraph to read here. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny things compared to what lies within us. This was from Ralph Waldo. What lies within you is what will help you overcome your fear of networking. And it's the same thing that will help you step beyond your peers or as the Frenchman says, au delà de standard. So that is what I thought I could put together in my personal experience to share with you all today. And once more, thank you very much. Fantastic, amazing, brilliant. Can we put a, hand, a round of applause for, for Felix, please? Ladies and gentlemen, this is, oh my God, oh my God, beyond expectations, beyond expectations. If you're tuned in here to get a teaspoon, guys, you got a cooking spoon because the, the, the presenters have delivered beyond what we even expected. Guys, kudos, kudos to Kizita, kudos to Christian, kudos to you, Felix. This is amazing. To summarize what Felix um, just presented, we have, you guys will have to excuse me. I'm, I'm actually doing some level of networking here at home. It's not easy keeping these kids away. <laughs> so we have to network even here at home. This is my, my son, two year old, and he's definitely gonna join me in moderating this session. Yeah, so I was saying that Felix emphasized on the power of referrals. Referrals, that is great. That is amazing. I mean, it's a word. It's a word that is that has a lot of weight. Oh my! Oh no! You can't do that. It's a word that has a lot of weight. Okay, the power of referrals, passion for what you love. There's a statement he made. You can't stop talking about what you're passionate about. Yes, that's important. The more you're passionate, the more you want to make things work. And also speak by your actions. Mm. Speak by your actions. Don't wait. Don't, don't wait to be recommended when you, you have nothing to offer. Your actions need to speak for themselves. I'll go, I'm going to ask all of us a question. Are you caught up in that Godfather mentality? Mm. How do we call it locally in Cameroon? Gombo. Gombo, Gombo in French, in English is okra for those, you know 
sliding the brown envelopes, having a godfather who puts you in a position you really don't merit. Mm -hmm. Here at the 237 Professionals Forum, we say no, we do not encourage that. We do not encourage that. We encourage hard work. And that's the kind of networking we are talking about. Thank you to Felix who took, took out time to make a difference between networking and the Godfather mentality, which some of us, unfortunately, often mistaken for networking. To summarize, um, a few quotes to summarize Felix's presentation, I will say that instead of having better glasses, your network gives you better eyes. Instead of better glasses, your network gives you better eyes. So it means your networks give your network gives you more value. Your network gives you more substance in your professional or social entourage. Networking is not all about the professional sphere. It is also about the social aspect. And for us to round up, there is another important quote I'd like to share with you. If you want one year of prosperity, you should grow a grain. If you want 10 years of prosperity, you should grow trees. But if you want 100 years of prosperity, people, you should grow humans. Somebody say yes, if that statement means something, something to yes. you. Yes. If you want to grow a hundred years of prosperity, ladies and gentlemen, you need to grow your network. And that's what we are emphasizing upon this evening. I'm so happy that we have over 70 people on the call this evening and you will have a chance to show us your faces. We don't want anybody here on the call and we don't see your face, okay? And this is the time for us to see your face. Remember, this is organized by the 237 Forum. We are on Facebook, we are on Slack, we are on WhatsApp, we are on YouTube. Venatus t Fund will have a chance before we, 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 we end to present the 237 Development Forum to all the participants. But before we present proceed to the question and answer session. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to enjoy a special musical interlude made in 237. Please, Venatius, could you unmute the mic of um, Andrew Bankui? He is the one to give us the musical interlude. And during the musical interlude, please, I invite you all to put your videos. And those of us who have good phones or those of us who have Android phones, use your phones to take good images so that we can share. St take a screenshot of your laptop. Take a picture of your laptop. We're going to share that on our various social media platforms, OK? Please put on your videos. We want to see your handsome and beautiful faces. Please do that. A special shout out to all of those who have been keeping the chat box Buzzy since from the start. Sharon B, special shout out to you. Viani Ejong, special shout out. Simon Bo, I'm seeing you. Andrew Bankwi, of course. Barbara Ngo, Mungai Fi, uh, Ne Awa Abam, Kimberly Nde. I, I come back to Kimberly because she's she is really the queen of the chat box today. And uh, if I've not caught your name, it doesn't mean you do not matter. Fuen, Foche Elvis, Fung. Elvis Tenfak, thank you all for keeping the chat box buzzy. While we will, we're going to have the musical interlude, please feel free to type in your questions in the chat box and direct them to the panelists whom you want to answer the question. Thank you all. Please unmute uh, Andrew's um, microphone so that he can play us this special 237 music that we can all enjoy. And like I said, put on your video so that we take pictures. We need to share this great experience on our various social media platforms. Okay, uh, is Andrew's microphone unmuted already? Can we have the music? And of course, we're, we're gonna wave, we're gonna dance, whatever you want to do. This is the 237 networking session. Enjoy as much as you can. Okay. Hold on, guys. Two seconds. <laughs> Can we have music, 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 music? 
and I'll put on your videos, please, so that we take we take the we take the pictures, and then we share on on, on the platform. We 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 we, we uh, immortalize this memorable moment. It's important to immortalize every moment we share in life. Okay, so please take out your picture. You take out your phones. Take pictures of all the participants. It's important. Over seventy participants. That is iconic. That is phenomenal. Are you ready, Andrew? While Andrew is getting ready, please, if you have questions, type them in the chat box. Type your questions in the chat chat box. Get your fingers busy. Type in all the questions you have. We have a seasoned team ready to address all your questions. Kizita, Christian, and Felix, you are listening to them and you know how seasoned, how skilled they are in this domain of networking. Don't miss your chance to get the advice you need to enhance your network, to make your network more productive, to make maximum use of your network. Banqui, if you're ready, please give us the music. If the music is not coming, we might start taking the first set of questions. All right, I see questions coming in already, iPhone 20. Thank you. Be right on. Great. Keep your questions coming, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. All right. Let's start sending in the questions. Let's go on the questions. Who is number one on the questions? Who is on number one on the questions? Okay, all we have are comments and appreciation. Of course, Christian said thank you is the key and we, uh, we, we, we appreciate the fact that you're sending us a lot of love. You're admiring what we are doing. You're enjoying the messages we're sending out. But please also know that this is a, this is, a, this is a time for you to clear all the doubts you have, okay? Don't be like uh, Bobe, uh, the, the anecdote we shared at the start, who was all clocked in his mind and decided to isolate himself, okay? Don't be that kind of person. If you have questions, if you were afraid of networking, because some of us are actually afraid of networking, we have that fear. If you are shy, how can you go about that? This is a time to ask all the questions you have. And of course, our panelists are going to answer them. So um, the questions are supposed to be sent only on the chat box, please. Send your questions and we will read them out, OK? Do not be bothered. We will not unmute everyone's mic. We will prefer that you um, you just type in your questions and we will read them out. The first question comes from Marion Masango. Shout out to you, Marion. Okay, I'll read the question. Kizita, it, it, it's directed to our first panelist, Kizita. You talked about the elevation speech. What are the key things to be included in that two minute speech? Kizita, over to you, girl. Thank you very much for this very interesting question. Um, yeah, like you all know, the elevator, the elevator speech is the opportunity you have to make greatness or to lose everything. So the very first uh, thing you need to do in an, elevation, in an elevator speech is to introduce yourself, what you're bringing on the table, the innovation you have, how the person you're talking to uh, can support you achieve that, and uh, uh, what uh, your next steps. So the very first thing is who you are. The second thing is uh, um, what you're bringing on the table, the, the innovation you have or the project you have um, that, could, that is of interest to that person. The third thing is how can that person help you achieve what you want to achieve? And of course, um, what, is the, what, what is in it for the person? Because that's also very important because you don't just, when you're going towards somebody, for the person to help you, the person needs to know what his organization uh, uh, would be gaining from supporting your idea or your project or, or, or whatever. And then the third thing is how you plan to achieve that. So in two minutes, you need to do that. 
And to develop an, ele uh, an, ele an elevator speech, it takes a lot of time because you start with a really long, uh, uh, with a little, really long write-up. Then you keep shortening it until you get to a really, really short paragraph that takes into consideration who you are, uh, what your innovation is, how that person can help you, how will the, uh, the innovation or the project be beneficiary to that person, to his organization, and how you plan to go about it. So in a few words, that's what your, your elevator speech should, should be composed of. Thank you. Thank you, uh, our ever lovely Kizita for that response. I hope that it answered your question, Marion Masango. If you have further doubts, please don't hesitate to uh, raise that in the chat box. The next question comes from you, Emma Fong, and it is, this, uh, it is directed to Felix Israel. <laughs> How do you deal with someone in your network who reaches yeah. out to you only when yeah. he or she needs a favor? Must networking be win-win? Wow, that question is deep, man. Felix, please give that brother an answer. <laughs> thanks, thanks for that, for that question. Um, must networking be win-win? Yeah. Uh, let, let, me, let me put it this way. And permit me, I, I, I don't know all the religious background of everyone here, but when Moses in the burning bush and, and, and God told him, you need to save the Israelites, the first thing he asked was, who am I? Guys, if any of us have a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with God today, I don't know what I would say, but that's a possibility. We focus a lot on our limitations, our weaknesses. We feel we have nothing to offer. That's, that's, that's one of the problems which I see with the, with the question. Don't put yourself in the spot where you feel you have nothing to offer. If I have to contact um, uh, Vinicius today, for example, my wife started talking with Vinicius before I ever knew him. And I followed up with him, with their conversations to know exactly who he is. I went on LinkedIn, looked at his profile several times before ever sending a friend request to him. And the day my wife surprised me with the phone, like, Venetius wants to say hi. I already knew exactly his line of thought. And we spoke for about 10 minutes, and my wife was confused, like, I thought you guys would know each other. But that's because I did a little bit of homework. I didn't join 237 Network immediately. He knows. I told him, bro, I need to take some time. I need to understand how I can help, how I can contribute. Why? Because I want to be able to give back. But I shared with him some of the ideas I had. He shared with me some of the ideas he had. Hence, my point is for you to connect with someone in your circle, be it in your network or not, look for something that is of interest to that person. You, can, you may have an information. For example, um, this, this, this webinar we are having today, this same discussion I presented, I presented it to Benashius. Hence, when he came up that he needed a panelist. I was a good fit for it because he had this information before. I had given something to him. So for me, that's how you can build on it. You have a network, understand what is of interest to them, look for a way, even if it's a greeting, even if it's a birthday witch, even if it's, it, it's an anniversary or something, just say something that you feel may elevate that person before asking for a hand. Remember, you need to give a heart before you ask for a hand. Thank oh, you. Great. Thank you very much, um, Felix, for that great answer. Our ever delectable Felix, he's so bright. No Amen. doubt he had so many referrals. Uh, you know, you're seeing it for yourself. Thank you so much, Felix. Thank you so much to all the panelists and, of course, all the participants. Keep your questions coming. We need the chat box to be as busy as a beehive today because this session is for you and only for you. The next question comes from Emma Fon and it is directed to um, Christian Elonge. The question is, how do you deal with someone in your network? Uh, uh, no, actually Emma, uh, Fabrice. The next question is from Fabrice Chuba, I beg your, your pardon. And it says, evening everyone. Hello Fabrice. The question goes to Christian. As a business owner, if you desire, if your desire is to network with someone like Dangote, mm, that's a high one. <laughs> How do you establish such a, such a network? 
Christian, please okay. give a brother okay. an answer. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there are different ways of connecting with Dangote. But first is to understand that no man is an island. We are all connected in one way or another with many other people, you know. So you may realize that maybe where Dangote is now, he, is, he may be in Tafos too far. But Dangote is having partners. He's having people that he's collaborating with. So you have like a first cycle, a second cycle, a third cycle, a fourth, and so on. So you just need to connect with someone who is part of Dangote cycle. As far as you can reach and be in contact with someone who is in contact with Dangote, then one day, as you usually say, one day, one day, as you are being strategic, as you are being, you know, as you are giving into that relationship, you will definitely get to him. So if I take that case, you may be in contact with him and he has a partner that he's collaborating with. Try to get in touch with that partner. And through that partner, maybe there will be a meeting where that partner will be invited. And by going there, if you are in a good relationship with that partner, he will invite you into it. And it's even biblical. If you see in the Bible, David was called to be a king, but he was introduced to the king by someone else because he, was, he knew how to play music. So it's just about being in the right place and you'll be introduced to fulfill your purpose. The, uh, the other way, Dangote has children. He has a family, you know. So maybe during one of the special events that he is having, if he's attending a meeting, I have, I have actually attended some events where the sole purpose for me attending that event was to meet one person. I remember in 2013 when I wanted to create a learning center, a learning research center at the University of Chang. I needed the approval of my lecturer, but to get their attention in class was difficult because in class, you know, they are, they are the big proof. They are serious. They will not laugh and all those things. But I knew a nightclub in Chang where I was going to meet them. But that, the access to that nightclub, because it was just influential people, it was very expensive for students. I think it was something like 10,000, you know. So I knew that if this business has to be established, then I need to have their refer, I need to have their approval. But in class or in their office, there are certain things that they are not talking or they don't have time. So I target the day that my teacher was going to be in that nightclub and I paid the entrance fee. So I was there, not because I wanted to dance or, 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 or any other thing, but because I needed to meet them. So there may be events where Dangote may be invited. There may be public events where he may be invited, you know. Prayerful, you pray and you go there. If the opportunity is there, you will be able to connect. Using those tips, don't just go say, oh, Dangote, I want this, as we have said. Try to see if there's anything that you can help him doing. Your smile is already a gift. He may remember you because of your smile. He may remember you because of something simple that you have said. So you can use public events. You can use people who are connected to him. You can connect with him on special events on his birthday. He is present on Twitter. Dangote is on Twitter. You can connect with him on Twitter. He is on LinkedIn. You can write to him on LinkedIn. But as I've said, the way you package your message will determine whether you will receive a response. Thank you very much, um, Christian. And of course, that's clear. The way you package your message, you can, uh, can determine whether you get a response or not. Uh, if you read LinkedIn articles, if you follow LinkedIn, you'll see testimonies of people who actually wrote to the likes of Elon Musk just on LinkedIn and they got a reply. It's possible. Okay, never give up. One of our, pre uh, our presenters said, one day now, one day. Patience yeah. in networking pays. Do not expect to write someone today and, and just expect that in the next 15 minutes or the next day they're going to reply you. No, it might not happen that way, okay? Persistence, it's very important. Thank you very much, Felix, for that very important or, or very edifying reply. The next question comes from Achondo Sonita, and it is directed to Mr. Tabenda. She did not get clearly the difference between a coach and a mentor. Could you please come back on that? Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sonita. Um, so a coach is, I'll, I'll use two very simple words. 
One is about an internal growth and internal nurturing of the skills you already have. And the other is about more of your external environment and your ideas and perception and perspective about life. A coach would mainly be focused about, let's say you are an accountant, for example, a coach is somebody who might be in that same domain with you or has interest in that domain and is able to groom you in that talent or in that skill or in that technical training. A mentor is somebody who might also not be in your field or in your field, but has a broader scope, a broader knowledge about things which affect you, things which affect your career, things which affect your life, things which affect your environment, more of from an external perspective to give you a better life ahead. What are some of the things you need to do? For example, what we are doing today, this is more of a mentoring session. Why? Because there are people here from different spheres of life. Coaching goes more specific and, and more individualistic to a person's particular needs, but mentoring is more of, it's, it's, it's an open concept of, of, of guiding you beyond your normal, I'll say, sphere of life or your normal scope of doing things. Okay, thank you very much. Achundu, I hope that answers your question. And of course, we keep thanking people like uh, Chefu Joy, like uh, Kimberly Nde, who keep on sending us comments. Elvis Ntempak, you keep on, uh, Tien Kuzong, thank you very much. You're keeping the chat box buzzy with your comments. And of course, we appreciate every comment you drop in the chat box. Um, Andrew, are you ready with the music? If Andrew's mic could be, uh, can be uh, on mute, I think we could have the musical interlude. Uh, Venatius, we are rounding up already, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time, for all the time you've taken to be with us today. I will invite you once again to please put on your um, video so that we could take pictures of this session. Uh, those who want to take pictures, please go on to gallery go on to, to, to gallery, it, 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 it's an option on, on your Zoom, uh, uh, you know, all, the, all the, 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 the bar below your Zoom uh, uh, browser. Please just go to gallery and then you can see all the participants. Please put on your video so that we take uh, pictures, pictures which of course we can share on our respective uh, networks. Uh, Andrew has a good musical sound bite for us. I would really love to listen to it, but it will need that he be on, you know, unmuted because all the participants are currently yes, muted. I'm already on mute. You're on mute. Could, could we have the music, Andrew? Yeah, so let me explain this before I try again the technical part. Mm -hmm. I have to minimize this screen and then I go to YouTube and then I click the play. Okay. So Sometimes there might be technical difficulties switching or sharing the same microphone between the two applications. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's what happened the first time that I tried, but let me still try. I hope it works this time. All right. While you're, while you're trying, please put on your videos and those taking pictures, take as many pictures as you can, because at, at the end of this, we want to see all the pictures, okay? Put on your video so that we can take pictures. I'm seeing lovely faces like those of Evaristus Ngoran, Manka Fru, Kianti Fru, Sylvia Sanjo, Elvis Tempfak, <laughs> Leslie Ngole. Oh my God, magnificent. Right side together, we are seeing you. Kila Lavan, we are seeing you. Vianney Ejong, we are seeing you. And of course, Bonten Mekwi, we are seeing you, Sakwe Claude, Achondu, Sonita, Marion, Musan, we are seeing you all. We want to take a picture of you all so that we can share on our respective social media platforms. Magnificent picture here, ladies and gentlemen. We are rounding up, but before we round up, if you have questions, please send your questions. So, Eclair Omeka at volume, Eclair? All right, guys, send in your questions. Just about 10 more minutes to go to wrap up. But before we wrap up, while waiting for Venatius to put the, of course, um, uh, Andrew to put the music. Uh, if, if no music comes, we're gonna sing, okay? I mean, we have to sing at the end of the day. We can't go without music. It's not possible.
possible. It's also part of networking, not so. Yeah, if music doesn't come, we're all going to sing. Venatius, please. We are going to, Andrew, are you on? Is the music ready? The music is playing, but there is the technical difficulty oh, to share. The okay, so we have to go. We're gonna have to see. It's playing. I I minimize our on screen and then I played it on YouTube. Please but do share your screen. Different. Share your screen. No. Let's enjoy something. But while Andrew is getting the music ready, um, consultant hero, I see you. Emma Fon, I see you. Hilary Adongo, I see you. Please get your videos on so that we can take a good picture. Venatius, you have a presentation on the 237 Professional Forum. And we will, of course, want to listen to that before um, you know, we continue with the rest. But of course, Andrew is sharing his screen and he's about taking us to music land. Andrew, can you, you see have, me? We see your screen. You have 30 yeah. seconds to try this out. If it doesn't work, we're going to sing. Oh, come on. Andrew, okay. is everything okay? It's not possible. Okay, it's not possible. We're moving on. Diane A. Jong, you want me to reiterate which quote? <laughs> I said so many quotes. I can't remember all of them. Andrew, stop sharing your screen. We are going to move on, okay? Venatius, okay. are you ready? with a presentation on the 237 forum. After that, if there are any questions, we'll take on them. If there are no, we're gonna wrap up. Have you taken all the pictures? If you have taken pictures, please show, show a thumbs up. Show a thumbs up if you have taken pictures. We want to make sure that there are pictures that have been taken, please. Show a thumbs up. No one has taken pictures yet. Okay, great, Christian has taken, great. We've seen pictures, fantastic. Benashius, over to you, brother. All right. Good evening, everybody. So my, my name is Venatius, um, one of the founders of the 237 Development Forum. I hope Chris, uh, Chris Ngoa is on the forum as well, because we, we brainstormed on this and we decided that we needed something like this. And why did we need something like this? Uh, I think uh, Felix said it all. Cameroonians, we like to grow individually. People want to be on top of the tree and eat the black plums by themselves as well in Cameroon. So we thought it will be important for for us to, to, to share, you know, to come together, network, support each other to grow. So that was just the whole idea. That's, that's how this forum came about. Are you guys, are you guys getting me? I don't know, are you getting me? Yes, yes. My we're getting you five checking. on five, right. five on five. Good. So, so we decided that we needed a forum where we could network, we could meet each other, we could support each other to grow. We also needed a network where we could hold the hands of those that are lower, you know, we could bring them up to the same level. You know, I think Felix captured it well. He trains somebody to take over his job, immediately he starts. So that's what, that, that was the whole idea actually, to support each other to grow. Because we realized that in Cameroon, we are good at complaining. We complain and we complain, but we do nothing about it. So we thought this kind of forum can bring minds of the same, people think alike together. It can bring those who are aspiring to be like some of us in this forum together and then they can learn from some of us so that's just all about it and we we we, we are on slack we are on whatsapp whatsapp is actually full at the moment so we might start looking at those people who are not really active to, to start bringing people who are on the queue there are a lot of people on the queue we're on slack slack is unlimited uh if tenfac is there tenfac can put our slack link for those who are willing to join we're on youtube we are on on, on facebook so you can follow us on this on this channel as well just go and click 237 development professionals and you will see us and to conclude, I would like to give a typical example of how networking has really helped me because my life to me, I just live by network. I will tell you an example. I was working in Congo. I worked in Congo for two years. I was working in, uh, in Save the Children at the time. We had a, we had a seminar in Giseni in, in Rwanda. This seminar had three international NGOs, International Rescue Committee and MSC. So uh, when we came on the first, they needed a volunteer to kind of like, coordinate the three, the three days events. We were trying to work on the proposal in the consortium together. So I volunteered to be the leader of the events for the three days. On the third day, there was a director from International Rescue Committee who had left New York. She was in that meeting, Elizabeth. She called me and she's American. She said, Venatius, you're very, very good at what you do. Please, if you want to jump ship, 
please email me. She gave me a card and she said, if I want to jump ship, remember I was working for Save the Children at the time. And she said, if I want to jump ship, I was very happy with my job, of course. So when she went back, I dropped an email to say, oh, thanks. You know, we, we interacted, we had coffee and we chatted. Just an email to say, oh, thanks. It was good meeting you and stuff at the end of the day. Then four or five months down the line, I was really prepared to jump ship now. You know, when that time to use that network really arrives. So I sent her an email and said, by the way, I'm actually prepared to jump ship. She was ecstatic. She sent an email to the director of HR and said, I have seen this guy. We have had three days of interaction with him. He's excellent. And let me tell you what happened. Within one week of that contact, I got a job offer from the organization. This is just to tell you how powerful networking is. And we should not take it for granted. We should not take it for granted that we have a forum where we are meeting professionals of, of high caliber. Can, we can interact with them. We should not take it for granted that we have people who can mentor us. We should not take it for granted that we have people who can coach us. We should really take advantage of these things and make it work and make our career grow. So I just thought to also bring in this example of how networking by you know going out of my way to do something that I felt was just a little bit something, not something I wanted to benefit from, but it turned out to be something that gave me a bigger job in the long run. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we really want to network. We really want to network, and wanted to know how to network. This session has really helped us to know how to network. There will be other seminars we'll be organizing. Every month, we'll be having one seminar. And if, if this is your first seminar, please kindly join the other seminars we will be organizing. Because we have professionals, as you've seen, who are willing to give for free. Our webinars are free. We, our time is free. We just support each other to grow. So once more, thank you so much. And our Slack link is there. If you want to join the Slack link, kindly cling on it. Over. Thank you very much. Wow, Venashus, thank you. He is one of the pillars of the 237 Development Forum. Oh, my, the music is there. What are we waiting for? Please come on, let's enjoy. The music is there, ladies and gentlemen. Please, <laughs> can we enjoy? for throwing light on the forum. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel like talking in my dialect right now. Mbombuma, you know, it's, 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 it's so serious. It's, it's so interesting. It's all about networking, okay? You need to network. The last question we're taking for today is from Fombang Lizette, and it is directed to you, my ever lovely Kizita. 
Oh. It says, please can you provide tips on how to have a meaningful conversation with someone in our network? Over to you, Kizzy. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Um, I think it's very important before you go for a networking event or before you engage with uh, a potential mentor or coach to be prepared to know what you want and uh, to have an elevator speech, like I said. So basically, um, I think, I don't know if it's Christian or um, Felix who actually gave some uh, conversation ideas. But I mean, you walk up to the person um, and it's, that's why it's so very important to do some background uh, checks before you engage with um, a potential mentor or coach. So when you get to the person, first of all, you introduce yourself and then you're like, hello, um, I'm so and so and so. I've been following you on LinkedIn or wherever, and I see that you have very interesting, very interesting perspectives on so and so and so. This is what I think about it. What are your thoughts? Immediately, it's an intellectual conversation you are engaging in. You have the person's attention. You don't waste time on small talk. Hello, how are you? you introduce yourself. You talk about something you know about that person. Immediately, you get the person's attention because the person is like, okay, this is a serious person. This person has. Uh, uh, done some background information on me and so the person is interested in engaging with you and then the minute you also give a perspective about what the person has said or what you think about a particular subject that is of interest to that person that is how a conversation goes and you'd find out that that person is very interested in engaging with you sometimes you meet some people that you did not expect at all and uh, it's um it's a mean it's the um, it's an opportunity of a lifetime and you need to get their attention so in that case what you, what do you do you have to think very quickly of course you have to introduce yourself and uh, if you know the person then you'll be like hey you must be miss so and so or mrs so and so i'm really happy to meet you because it's something i've been trying to do i wanted to talk to you about so and so and so and uh, even if the person doesn't have time um, and that has happened to me, you see the person would say, okay, this is my card, or this is my assistant's number, call my assistant and follow up with the person. And this is exactly what happened to me. Then I was still doing my, I was like a really young girl, that's like 15 years ago. I heard on the, no, a friend's older brother heard on the radio, some workshop happening at the British Council at the time. Uh, it was something around, around the International Day Against Torture. So since I was doing human rights, he called us and he said, there is something I heard on the radio that there is something happening at the British Council, you guys should go. My friend wasn't very interested because she was like, you don't just go without an invitation. But I took my chances, I went. When I got there, they asked me if I had an invitation. I said, no, I'm a student, I came as an observer. And guess what, they gave me a badge with the name observer. I felt very proud. I got into the workshop and then at some point, somebody from the UN Center for Human Rights and Democracy came and did a presentation. As he finished and as he was leaving, I ran after him and I'm like, hi, sir, um, I know where your office is. I've been meaning to come. Please, can I have your card? He, he said, I'm going for another meeting at so and so. Sorry, I cannot talk to you right now. Um, this is my card. Give me a call. And guess what? Uh, a few days afterwards, I called the guy. I actually went to his office and that's where I knew about internship opportunities that existed in that office. And that's how I got my first internship or my journey with the United Nations. So sometimes you take your chances. Even if the person is leaving, you run after them. Even if you're short of breath, just whatever comes up, they try to, 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 to have a follow, an opportunity to have a follow up, take the person's card or the assistant's card or something. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Keys, uh, for that great response. If it doesn't answer your question, you know where to get more answers, the 237 Development Forum. You can get us on Slack. You can get, get us on WhatsApp. You can like our Facebook page and leave comments on our Facebook page. We will respond to you. Thanks to Elvis and Tenfak, who has left um, uh, links you know, in the chat box on how you can join the 237 Development Forum. 
Special thanks to you, Tikum Lovelin, Nse Martin, Joy Chifu once again, Andy Banks, and of course, Elvis Ntem Fak. We are enjoying all the comments you're leaving in the chat box. Now, before we wrap up, one person uh, requested for some of the quotes that I you know, shared uh, during this session. So please, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, for your own pleasure, I will read again one, I will read over or I will retake uh, the, slot, the, 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 the quotes that I've shared all through this session. The first quote, the opposite of networking is not working. Eclair or add volume? <laughs> okay. The opposite of networking is not working. Networking is help me, I help you. Scratch my back, I scratch your back. Your network is your net what? Your network is your net what? Instead of better glasses, your network gives you better eyes. Who needs glasses when you have good eyes? That's networking, people. If you want one year of prosperity, grow a grain. If you want 10 years of prosperity, grow a tree. And if you want 100 years of prosperity, ladies and gentlemen, grow people. people. Grow your network. Networking is more about farming than it is about hunting. Don't be on the expecting side. What do you bring on the table? That is networking. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for participating. Thank you all for tuning in for, to this rendezvous. If you wanna find out more, for more quotes on networking and other juicy topics, 237 Development Forum. You want to see more of Kizita, 237 Deve Development Forum. You wanna see more of Felix Israel, 237 Development Forum. You want to see more of Christian? You know where to go. Not so. We take the rendezvous for the 237 Development Forum. As Venetia said, we have a host of webinars planned all year round. Thank you. Take the rendezvous for next time. Bye-bye. Can we have that piece of music as we sign out? This is what happens when you used to yeah, be an MC. great. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you.